All right, we continue talking football and Trinidad and Tobago's 23-year-old winger, Tyree Spicer, is starting the new year with a lot to look forward to. He was, in mid-December, the first overall pick in the MLS Super Draft by Toronto FC. In his four seasons at Lipscomb University, Spicer netted 29 times and provided 18 assists. This included 14 goals and three assists last season. In other eye-catching accomplishments, he was named to the ASEAN All-Conference first team, the United Soccer Coaches All-Region second team, the ASEAN Championship co-MVP, the ASEAN All-Tournament team and ASEAN Player of the Week. Well, Tyree Spicer joins us to talk about his accomplishments and expectations with Toronto FC. Welcome to the Sportsmax Zone, Tyrese, and Happy Happy New Year. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy New Year to you as well. All right, so let's talk about the good news. You're starting 2024 with a bang. How does it feel, of course, to be the number one overall Super Draft pick? Did you see this coming? Uh, maybe I had like some talks with uh, Toronto before. Uh, so I had an idea of it, but like personally, it's just overwhelming to know that I went number one overall in the whole of America. Um, just coming from a small country like Trinidad and Tobago, I just want to, you know, encourage all the youths. You could just, you know, you work hard enough and you, you dream big, you could accomplish anything you put your mind to. Yeah, Tyrese, you speak about coming from a small country like Trinidad and Tobago. As you can tell by my accent, I'm also from Trinidad and Tobago. And I have to say, I'm so proud of you because for quite some time, at least for all of my career sitting on this show, I've not had anything really to celebrate when it comes to Trinidad and Tobago football. You know, I always have to read about the past footballers and look back at those clips from before my generation. But thanks to you, we have something now to celebrate. And, uh, you know, of course, a lot of the Trinis will feel very proud, of course, to identify with you. How difficult was it from, you know, starting your career in Trinidad and Tobago during these times and, of course, making it now where you're the number one pick? Um, I would say it was pretty difficult. I say I'm so thankful for uh, my dad and my mom to always support me, uh, my uncle as well, and my aunt. Uh, they always stood by my side no matter what uh, situation I was in. Um, I come from like humble beginnings, you know, uh, how it all started. Uh, my uncle bought me my first cleats. Like sometimes uh, growing up, like I wouldn't have enough money to, to, to get cleats or to go to school. And, you know, all of that like helped me develop as a person. Uh, and, you know, uh, just going through all the tick and tins uh, with uh, life, honestly, what whatever challenges it threw at me, I, I really dealt with it well. Uh, like I developed really well um, at Trinity Nationals. I would say um, I grew up under my coach, Mr. Work. I like to shout him out. And my dad, of, all, of course, uh, he been my coach and since I was like five years old. Uh, he taught me everything I knew today. Uh, and I think that making a step to America, um, it was a big jump. But I think I adapted well. I think that uh, the environment I had and the culture I had with my teammates and my coach, uh, I think it helped me grow as a person and mature like over the years. And I think that like, last season, it just uh, it all like just went straight in line for me. Uh, it was just at my peak, and I just performed like at a really good on a high consistent level. And I thank God for that as well. Because I always pray every day for it, uh, and, and I made it happen. Uh, and it wasn't just, and it just wasn't like a blink of an eye. It was work. It was progress. It took time, but like it paid off. And I would just like to say that if you go. Tyrese. All right, so Lance, we yeah. lost Tyrese in the middle of, of mm. course, you know, such an important point. Mm. I was about to follow up, though, with, you know, he spoke about the struggles, you know, getting his first boot from his uncle. Mm. And for a young man like Tyrese, I, my question, the next question would be instantly, how was he able to stay focused? Because 
it's so easy and I mean I experience this myself sometimes to feel like you just want to give up right but for him he stuck through and of course now he's reaping the rewards and I really wanted to know you know what kept him so focused yeah well I think we're going to get him back hopefully but um, he did suggest that it, it helped to toughen him so even though his um, start had been difficult I think the negative aspect of that he turned it into a positive and he yeah, made sure beautiful. that that helped him to become a tougher individual to to climb you know the the mountains he has climbed yes yeah, so beautiful well i think we have good news Taris is back with us Taris, are you there yeah i'm here i'm here all right we lost you for a second do you want to continue that point that you were making yeah uh so yeah as i was saying i started off um playing soccer with my dad uh, from a very young age. Um, I wasn't the best growing up, but I always tried to work hard and pursue my goals. And I always aspired to, to get a scholarship or to go professionally. And I think over the years, me grinding and I uh, putting in the work behind the scenes and on the field, I think it, it helped me develop as a player. Um, I didn't, I wasn't like, I didn't have enough like uh, money growing up. So it was difficult at times, but like I overcame it. My parents would like, you know, provide for me. And I think like growing up, I just always wanted to to give back to them when I when I go pro. And I think I have the opportunity now. Yeah. I think that me uh, giving back to them is just gonna help me and help them. Uh, it's just gonna make me feel so uh, satisfied, honestly. And Tyrese, I saw in an interview, you were compared to Alfonso Davies. How do you feel about that? Um, it, it's surprising, honestly. Yeah. Um, just like thinking that's a world-class player and they, they're like comparing me to him, my attributes and his attributes, my speed and dynamicness. Like it's, it's, it's a surprise, but like I worked hard and I think like comparing us together is a big jump, but I think it's, it's a good comparison. Right, and how excited are you to work with coach John Herdman, who had a big part to play in the development of Alfonso Davies? Yeah, just knowing that he had a big part in Alfonso Davies' uh, career, um, it's just going to be exciting. Mm, yeah, I think we, 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 we lost him again. I'm not sure if we're going to get him back, but um, some connectivity issues there. But... Um, Really great to see this happening for young Spicer. It's the second time in history that a Caribbean player has been drafted number one in the MLS. The Jamaican Andre Blake as a goalkeeper had achieved that, which was significant as well because goalkeepers hardly ever get that kind of uh, position. Yeah, um, uh, Tyrese is back with us. Uh, Tyrese, a couple of weeks ago, we had a discussion about the role of schoolboy football in the Caribbean developing our players. I know you had played for St. Mary's College and uh, transferred to St. Augustine. Can you briefly talk about your experience playing SSFL football in TNT and uh, how much of a role that played in, in developing you as a player? Um, I think my role developed really well in uh, the SSFL. I think the level is, is really good. I think there's a lot of players that are overlooked and I think that there's a lot of good talent there um, like myself there's a guy called uh, Kai Phillip as well he's really good he plays for um, Evansville University um, there's a lot of good players that comes out of the SFL I think that the schools develop uh, the young guys to, to excel uh, in life um, I think that is a good is a good program and it shouldn't be overlooked uh, there's a lot of good prospects there yeah, a lot of Caribbean players get lost in the U.S. collegiate system to their national programs. I've heard complaints that a lot of the quality players in the U.S. collegiate system are often not looked back at from, you know, national coaches in, in, in the Caribbean. Um, how eager are you to be a part of the TNT Soka Warriors international program? Uh, it, would be, it would be a dream, honestly. I always wanted to represent the red, white, and black, honestly. Uh, I would be so happy to just represent my country. I know my parents is gonna be proud of, uh, for me to be even be called up to the national team. I think sometimes uh, college guys get overlooked because they, the, the coaches don't know how high the level is. But I think that the D1 level is, is, is very close to professional. 
um, they, they provide so much uh, like stuff for you to, to work on. They have so much uh, development programs for you if you, you need to work on anything. Uh, the, the access to unlimited supplies is there. So like the level is, is really good. And I think that they, they do get lost in, in the collision uh, playing field. Yeah, and, and, and quickly, uh, Tyrese, because I know the MLS season usually starts maybe March or so. Um, can you talk to us quickly about what happens between now and uh, the start of the MLS and your your um, introduction to the to the Toronto staff and so on and preseason? Uh, yeah, so preseason starts the 13th. Um, I'm, I'm doing my uh, personal work I got from my performance team from Toronto FC. So, like, I'm doing that right now to get fit, to get my body in the right shape. And then when I go into Toronto, I'll do a medical, and then we'll go to preseason, wherever that would be. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to be on a journey, to even, like, be on that team. So I'm happy for it. Yeah. And of course, we know that Trinidad and Tobago has a fairly rich record of uh, outstanding players in the MLS. You've had uh, a couple of MLS Cup winners from TNT. Jovin Jones, a two-time winner with the Seattle Sounders, and Kevin Molino just recently with the, with the, with the current champions. And uh, we know that Stern John, who has now retired, remains a legend in, in the Columbus crew folklore. So you recognize that as a TNT player, you are following up on some platforms that were laid by, you know, other outstanding TNT players. Yeah, like just to follow on their footsteps. I always used to look at them on TV and be like, you know, one day I aspire to be there on that field and I have like the youths look up to you. Because I always looked up to Molino, I always looked up to, to Joven Jones, and my dad actually coached Stern John. I actually had a talk with Stern John like two days ago. And, you know, they always like tell me to keep keep my head down, keep humble, and keep going close as well. And, you know, like right now I'm in that spotlight, and I want to like show the, the younger folks that no matter where you come from or how low you are, like if you work hard enough, if you dream big enough, you could achieve anything you put your mind to. And, you know, that's a message I want to put out there. No matter where you come from, you could do whatever you want. Yeah, Tyrese, I'm so proud of you. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Max soon. And I'm looking forward to see your progress as you suit up for Toronto FC. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just here there from Toronto FC's Tyrese Spicer. He hails from the same country as I, Trinidad and Tobago. Let's take a break.